Hi, everyone, and welcome to Redefining Resilience. Uh, this is an interview series where we're trying to look at the buzzword of resilience and kind of get messy with it and, and look at what it actually is. I am Jennifer, and I'm from Peak Resilience. I'm a counselor and a supervisor, and we provide um, feminist trauma-informed counseling services. And I'm very, very excited today because we have Kat Dinning and Kara Underwood from the Out Podcast, which has over 50 episodes now. You guys, you, you. That's good. Started, good yeah, job. You started in, um, you started in 2020, pandemic podcast. Yeah. As soon as it hit, we started podcasting. Exactly. Yeah, so, um, so I'm going to introduce you and a little bit about the podcast, but before we get into it, I'm going to talk a little bit about where we are. So I, myself and Kat are three blocks away from each other on um, what's now known as Vancouver. Um, the, the territory that we are actually on right now, though, is traditionally the lands of the Squamish and Tsleil-Waututh and Musqueam um, peoples. And the land that we're on is actually unseated and stolen. We're also welcoming, and I'm actually from where Kara is, is currently in right now, which is known as Calgary. Um, but Calgary uh, is actually the Treaty 7 lands, which is traditional territory of the Siksika, Kainai, Satina, Pikani, and Nakoda. And it's um, a huge trading center of the Métis uh, Region 3 of Métis Nation of Alberta. So we're very grateful to have Kara zooming in. Um, Kat and I used to be living in uh, living in Calgary as well, but now we're split up. Back we're all split. Back Together <laughs> with the Zoom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, I'll, ta I'll talk a lot about um, your podcast that I'm a Patreon member and semi-obsessed with. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> because, so as a white, <laughs> hetero, cis lady, mm -hmm. I listen to the Out podcast and it's all about coming out stories with people from the LGBTQ2SIA community over 50 episodes of different people from different countries for 40 countries all over over 40 i or, can't there's so many now i can't even count yeah over and, let's just say over 50 that's a over 50 number. okay let's just guesstimate <laughs> um it's headed in that direction anyway so that's fine um it's around there <laughs> Um, so basically why I wanted to have both of you on the podcast is number one, we've known one another since we were all approximately 18 years old. Kara, I think I met you mm. when we were like 20. I, uh, it w I was, yeah, cause I'm a little bit, I'm two years older than you guys. So I guess I, I'm two years older than you guys. Yeah. Well, no, but I'm thinking, like, <laughs> Yeah, around there. Like I was 21. So you guys, I think were 19 probably. And you, you were yeah. always the mature one trying to keep us in line. And oh, we yeah. were always the wild ones that were not. Because <laughs> Jenny and I met working at camp. And then I went to school in Medicine Hat, Alberta, where Karen and I met. And mm -hmm, so yeah. it was great because Karen and I became really good buddies. And then we all just became such good friends. It was mm -hmm. awesome. So what made you, maybe before we get into, you know, all the stories of the podcast and kind of the themes of resilience that come through, um, what made you start the podcast during a pandemic? Like what was the, what was the thought process? What made you think we want to do a podcast only on coming out stories? Mm. What yes. led you to that? Uh, so I'll take that cat and then we'll just kind of go from there. But uh, mm -hmm. just grab a drink I, uh, here. when I first, <laughs> since I came out, uh, I came out in my early twenties, but before that I, um, I lived you know, back in Saskatchewan and I, I was uh, kind of seeking some understanding around my sexuality and I couldn't find any uh, like resources around to, to kind of make it seem normal to me to understand who I was and what I liked because um, 
you know, like I'm almost 40. So the, the internet and everything was just kind of really getting going and like the resources were limited back then. So like, I literally went to the library and of course the library was limited. The gay section is like this big and it, I can't even remember. There was nothing there. And, uh, and so, um, I remember thinking that I wish there was, because I always really liked the chicken soup series, the chicken soup for the everything. Yeah. But <laughs> what I was looking the for the life. <laughs> so I was like, you know, I always wish there was something cool like chicken soup for the lesbian soul or gay soul or something that resonated with me in my, in my, like my thoughts and what I, you know, there's always stories about, about straight couples and there was never like, uh, something that felt like it really resonated with who I was and and I mean now it's it seems like it's everywhere which is awesome for the new generations but uh, but back then I remember thinking that and so so that kind of led through like kind of was always in the back of my mind through my life and uh, so that was back in my early 20s and like 20 years later um, you know Kat was wanting I remember Kat saying she was wanting to do a podcast. I think, was it around coaching Kat? Cause you're a coach. So it was, it was yeah. around coaching. you were thinking of doing that. And, and I was, I was kicking around the idea of doing a podcast cause this, this podcast thing came about and, and it seemed like really cool. And uh, my idea was there and my, like um, the creative side of what I wanted was there but the whole technical side of it is not something I'm interested in at all. The marketing side, the creative side, that's my, my that's what I like. So then when Kat and I just kind of started talking a little more and I thought, and, you know, and, and Kat came out, you know, during my, my time in the 20 years, you know, she came out as well. And so I thought it would be a perfect way to, um, to just, maybe we could make this happen. And I just, asked her and she was like yeah let's let's maybe start a, a podcast I'll look into this and, and it was awesome because the things she likes I don't like and the things I like she doesn't like so it it's like a really good <laughs> match because we I think we complement each other well um in that and our personalities were you know we have a similar sense of humor but different interviewing uh uh, ways of interviewing hey cat like we're we're different in that that way um, and I think guests can find some um, I think our guests find one of our personalities if not both of our personalities either disarming or um, you know really easy to kind of get along that we've heard of, uh, um, often is that that they feel really comfortable and that's what we want is like this podcast where people can just share their coming out stories it's not about us we never really want it to be about us it's about their story and and yeah essentially really it is about their resilience and how they overcame all these weird obstacles and people telling them they're wrong and you know and it's it's wrong whether it's through their religions or their parents or their grandparents or just friends um, the resilience these people are showing is just like incredible and so it's gone it's it's so much more than we we really anticipated and it's so real that it's it's hard not to be touched by these stories and so yeah it's um that's kind of the where it came from and how Kat and I came to do this podcast and and uh yeah we're we're enjoying it we're taking a little bit of a summer kind of uh hiatus hiatus um, <laughs> i don't know what that word means but I've i don't know it. i was gonna say it too but I, <laughs> i've never used it before i'll throw it out the hiatus hiatus break i <laughs> uh, don't know what it means uh, but, yeah that's where we're at Anyways. that's amazing and uh cat so it sounds like when kara sort of suggested it it was just like oh yeah that makes sense mm -hmm. what what was your process in the whole thing I think, I mean, I've always wanted to have a, a podcast or something like that, just to, I just was feeling like there was more purpose for me out there, um, you know, being a life coach, having my own clients, but that never was going to become my full-time job. I don't think I ever wanted it to be that, but I love it. I mean, it sets my soul on fire. Um, 
you know, the, the whole emotional side of things and helping people work through things or just hearing people's stories. And so I just, I got on board with Kara because I mean, she and I have obviously been really close for a long time. Um, and I feel like it was a way to give back because for me coming out about 10 years now uh, and being a coach and having the ability to have a channel like the, this living in Canada and having that privilege, um, it just felt like something that seemed right. It just seemed like a part of my purpose. And we've been having a lot of fun with it. And the stars really did align. Like I've said that a million times before because of what Kara's strengths are and things that I've done in the past with sort of like back end website development. And so, yeah, we've just been able to, I don't know, find a, a place for this in our lives. You know, both of us having full time jobs um, and doing this kind of on the side, but we both love it. We just love hearing people's stories and walking through the process with them and learning how they navigate through their resilience and really hard times where they really didn't have a lot of resilience, but they came back from it. So yeah, yeah it just, it really, it just has really shifted my perspective with the whole coming outside of it. Um, living in Vancouver where it's so accepted, um, but talking to someone who lives across the world or comes from a Mormon religion where it's not that. And so it's just really opening my eyes. So awesome. Yeah. And uh, I got to say it's, it's opening my eyes. And I told you both this, that, you know, I'm, I identify as hetero and what I gain from listening to this podcast all about the LGBTQIA community um, is how I can honor the parts of myself that are maybe not honored in our society. Yeah. Um, and that's what I get because I see and I hear these stories of people like against all odds, like you said, you know, people from families where they don't have their family support at all, or they're living in a country where it's illegal, or like there's, there's so much courage that comes through in these stories that it really gives me, I guess, more permission yeah. um, to, to do what feels right internally myself. And so I want to talk about, because like resilience, I don't know, I started this this interview series because the 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 word resilience since the pandemic started was like being pumped in the news and um i i started the practice peak resilience because i wanted to look at becoming resilient is really ugly usually it's really messy it's mm -hmm. usually um for me anyways i'm usually drenched in insecurity and fear when i'm in the process of becoming resilient yeah yeah <laughs> uh, and so like that's kind of where i'm like wait a second we're putting like some shininess on the idea of like bouncing back after adversity mm -hmm. um but that's actually not how it works on a day-to-day -day basis and one of the reasons why i wanted to have you on is to talk about the nitty-gritty aspects when people are sharing their coming out stories when people are sharing, okay, well, this is what happened and I wasn't maybe on with the adversity side of things, some of the stories are lovely and, and it went really well and they felt really supported and it connected them when they came out. And some of the stories, there's way more adversity and, and hate essentially mm -hmm. and oppression. Um, and so I guess what I'm wondering is in your process of interviewing over 50 people, about their really detailed process of coming out. Yeah. What have you seen in terms of the resilience of people? I mean, I know you've talked about various different stories. What are some stories where you've seen people develop resilience through the real adversity of coming out when maybe it's not always supported? Um, I have an answer. I can go first. Yes, <laughs> Catherine. You and the you and Hawaii. Yes. Yes. Hello. 
from Hawaii. Her, her, her background is a virtual Hawaii background if no. you're listening to this and not watching. <laughs> no, it's real. <laughs> I'm at a toy convention. Yeah. <laughs> In the basement. In the basement of the toy convention. Um, Yeah, I was I was thinking about this before the interview, and I really go back always when I think of resilience to knowing yourself and standing up for your convictions. I think the more that our guests have been able to understand who they actually really are. the more resilient they become. Mm -hmm. Um, And not only with our guests, I mean, personally, that's how I feel. And it doesn't necessarily, because you can have adversity, even if you're hetero, there's adversity all over the world. Uh, But I think, (laughs) but I think for this process of coming out, um, the more people can stand up for their convictions, the more they have a voice, and the more they can bounce back because they're able to find their people after all of what they've gone through is the way I see it well that's a relatively good answer next Kara what is your (laughs) that's my interview (laughs) style (laughs) okay no No, I think that is like I mean extremely well said and um, what I'm hearing from from all of this too is like when things aren't going well, unfortunately, that's when people are developing the resilience to be able to define who they are in order to present that. Because like mm-hmm. there's there's multiple processes involved in coming out, right? There's so like the yeah. process in recognizing that you're different and that you feel different. There mm-hmm. is a whole bunch of things that happen in that process. Yeah. To then get you to want to define it more and mm-hmm. then to get mm-hmm. you to want to share it with certain people who are safe enough. Mm-hmm. And so I just, you know, when I listen to these, these stories that you have on, on the out podcast, I think about like the process that is really like, sometimes it's like, Oh, I came out. I, I was in and then I'm out, but it really is like a very in-depth process that starts extremely subtly mm. and there's resilience through each sort of process of it. Do you think that's true or? Yeah. And mm-hmm. I, what I've learned is like everybody's experience has been so different and yeah, like every story is so unique, you know, and and I think that you're right, Jenny. A lot of times it's just like, I came out and then, okay, but like that was maybe like years of wanting to come out and the resilience of dealing with like shit on TV. Can I swear? Sorry. Oh, so, God. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <Whoa. laughs> <laughs> you know, Muter. Like, uh, years of, of being resilient to, to jokes and uh, your you know differences that your parents might share and, and you know and you knowing i mean i'm kind of speaking from experience <laughs> just yeah. thinking about it. Just yeah. telling her a coming out story right now. yeah yeah <laughs> no but that like for me resilience was was growing a bit of uh not a shell but like a just growing just being strong enough to to know I was I was different, but um, but but being able to to uh, to guide to navigate my way through safely until I was ready to come out, mm-hmm. and I think mm-hmm. like I didn't. Yeah, I mean that's just my story, and I sorry I leaned into my story, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's my how I can pull from that is like the resilience starts. For me, for some people, it starts when they're when they're young. For some people, they don't they don't even know they're gay and or or um, not straight. I guess is a better way to say it. Uh, they don't even know they're they're not straight until they're like until they're almost in a relationship. You know, so sometimes it happens quite quickly. So there isn't that that, uh, and that's where the everybody's story is unique. Is like some people, it's very quick. 
-hmm. Some people are res have to gain that resilience through their whole lives until they're ready to come out at 40 or whatever. So, um, but yeah, no, it's, it's definitely like there's stages throughout mm -hmm. and just coming out is its own very scary uh, time. And there's a lot of like fear around rejection and, and you're willing, you're kind of willing to like put it all on the line for your own happiness, for your, to be true to yourself. And that, that is, is scary. It's very scary because you could lose your family. You could lose your parents. You could lose your loved ones. And a lot of people have in some of our stories and some of our podcasts, many people, yes. I'd say over 50% have lost, um, but gained new family and the, mm -hmm. the family they created on the flip yeah. side of that. So a lot of times people are creating these wonderful, beautiful relationships and families uh, in communities. And, and, um, and I think that is like the, the ultimate goal is to be, to find a, a group and hopefully it's your family. And if not, then you create a family of people who love you for exactly who you are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that there is an added layer of resilience that you need to have when you come out because, um, when you're a heterosexual, you're just like, hey, I'm going to date. And then the assumption is that you're dating someone of the opposite sex. But when you're coming out, you're telling people, you're exposing yourself in a way that heterosexuals don't need to do. Where like, hey, so I love different people and I'm attracted, I'm sexually attracted to different people. And I think that's the part that's that's really digs deep, you know, when like coming out to like your mom and like I have sex with different, I don't have sex with men essentially is what I'm saying. Yeah. And so it's, it's like this rawness that um, adds, right. I think a layer to that resiliency because you're just like really naked Yeah, yeah. And, tell, and telling your loved ones or like if I'm telling someone at work who I'm close to that I'm queer or gay or whoever I want to identify. I'm, I'm, I'm saying that and it's like, it's another piece of rawness that I need to come to terms yeah. with. You know, not, not that I just like shout it from the rooftops, like that I'm gay, but you know, it's just like my partner. And then I'll say like she, and it's just like, every time I say that I get more resilient. And I, I know I'm speaking from personal experience, but it's that resiliency that you need to build in order to be like, at the end of the day, I don't care if you yeah. care or not that I'm gay. Yeah. And so I'm hearing, like, I'm hearing there's so much rawness and you're naked. And then mm -hmm. I'm also hearing that you have to have a shell to protect yourself because it's fucking terrifying, basically. Um, yeah. And so I'm, that to me is sort of the interesting part of resilience is like what makes up that shell and what allows you to still, you have this real sort of barrier of a shell that's trying to protect you with certain people, but then you're strong enough and brave enough to come out of the shell and be super vulnerable with other people. Like to me, that is, you know, the process of resilience in navigating this, right? Well, we have some of our guests who they came out, but then stuff happened in their life where they went back into the closet and then they mm -hmm. married yeah. someone of the opposite sex in a hetero relationship. And then that ended. And then they were like really ready to come out of the closet. Like, here we go world. Um, but I think of it as conviction. I think of it, of the resiliency and that shell building is like, this is who I am. Yeah. Love me or don't mm -hmm. uh -huh. like, that's how it feels to me. Yeah. And it, that's mm -hmm. why like, yeah, it takes, takes, time to get to that point where you're kind of just like I don't want to hide anymore I'm kind of over it and I'm not going to live my life for other people Tiff, uh, Tiffany or one of our late last guests she uh, she came out later in life and yeah just got to a point where it was like I'm so done with pretending for other people I can't and like you know uh, she de she's, she's dealt with and is dealing with uh, much um pushback would you say cat mm -hmm. yeah and yeah. uh and still and so but but she's shown lots of strength uh through that and and continues to struggle with it uh and and to lay that out 
um, that she still struggles with that. So it's an ongoing process for some in that case. Uh, and sometimes it might just be an ongoing process of, of resilience through their whole lives as well. Mm -hmm. Just really coming to terms with their new reality, but uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but it's also that paradox of like, I really struggle with this, but I've never been happier because I know who I am. Yeah. Like, you know? Yeah, exactly. I remember when I, when I came out, it was like, I didn't want to be anybody else. I was like, I just need to do this because I feel like it's, it's going to, I remember I actually talked to a guy and he said, when you come out, it's like all the doors are going to open for you. And, um, I actually chatted with a counselor and so he said that and I was like oh, I want that and I did <laughs> and then and I came out to in college with Kat and and at that time and it was just like I didn't want to be in that closet anymore I didn't want to be hiding anymore I wanted to be start feeling like happy and I could I knew I was going to feel happy because I wasn't I was dealing with like some anxieties and and just like I couldn't concentrate on school. Mm -hmm. um, I was starting to feel really sad about life, like about living. And so it got to that point where I was like, what's the point here? Yeah. And so, so yeah, mm -hmm. like, I think it has to get to almost that point where you're like, I could live like this or I could be happy. And so everybody else's happiness uh, for you being a different person is like, it's not worth it anymore. I want, I need to be happy and live my truth. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm willing to kind of put it on the, the line for that. Yeah. It's scary. because essentially like it comes down to life and death is what I'm hearing. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, you just can't. And, and again, you know, one of the things that I was listening to what, okay. What was the episode that you did with the lawyer from Vancouver? Yeah. That, um, Adrian, Smith. Adrian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was listening to that podcast episode and um, yeah, just thinking about um, safety. And I think mm -hmm. they were the ones that said, you know, it's, it's okay. Cause I think you asked them something like, you know, what, what advice would you give or so something along those lines. And one of their responses was, it's okay to wait to come out. It's okay mm -hmm. to stay in the closet. It's okay to be safe. Um, because you, we don't know the, the actual situations and environments where people are. And it just, I mean, they talked about like being in law school. Um, and so I guess for me, I'm, I'm kind of interested in the agency that comes with going back in the closet in certain environments to protect mm -hmm. yourself, but being able to be out with certain people because to me when I was listening to Adrian talk about that I was thinking to myself like that's how they navigated a really brutal oppressive harmful system yeah. and now they're a boss ass lawyer in Vancouver mm -hmm. changing mm -hmm. the system yeah. but they mm -hmm. had to hide and you know so mm -hmm. so that's what I'm that's talking about so in true. terms of resilience right it's not always clean and easy and sometimes you have to kind of be sneaky <laughs> yeah well it's being smart and you're right yeah. because it's like adrian could have had a um negative experience in law school and it could have just been about their identity or get through the program because they want to be in law school and they want to fight for people's rights mm -hmm. um and that's so true, like changing the system. That's exactly what happened. So it's being smart about the environment you're in to make sure that you are safe, that you're like physically safe yeah. in that type of environment. And I think we hear that a lot from our guests is like, be safe first and then come out. Like that's number one. I mean, coming out is messy and beautiful and amazing and terrible, but at the end of the day, you wanna be alive. <laughs> And, you know, it's the same thing with, with pronoun use, like uh, misgendering, uh, is that misgendering? Mm -hmm. Is that right? Misgendering someone could mean life and death for someone, you know, and it's just opening my eyes to that of using the proper pronouns. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's very sensitive and 
especially for the trans community. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. so go ahead, Kara, what were you going to say? I was just going to say that that was a good moment there because I find um, that a lot of times uh, Kat and I, and we've brought this up a couple of times is that through this podcast um, experience, we, we've been learning a lot of like so much. And I think a lot of times people think because we're in the community, we happen to just know all the things and why, all the <laughs> yeah. things, why is this, mm-hmm. this person, all these things. And, but we don't, we are just Kat and Kara <laughs> who uh, <laughs> yeah. like women and mm-hmm. we don't know everything and we don't pretend to know everything. And so the beauty of uh, of out is that we're we're learning alongside everybody else who's listening so and you included mm-hmm. so so it was just like a good moment there where where cat was uh understanding uh, a term and and i think that there's many moments like that in in our in the podcast that we've been pulling from and yeah mm-hmm. there's the rawness <laughs> mm-hmm. well that's okay that brings me to a question around, I guess, allyship, because you've had, Kat, you had your brother on, and yeah. you've, you've kind of talked about, you know, various forms of allyship and how you, how people can be supportive. And, and I guess that's what, you know, I'm thinking about the process of, of resilience in, in coming out. And I'm kind of interested in how can allies support that process? Um, you know, for people who are at various stages of it, you know, mm-hmm. that's a little, well, I, I don't know. That's yeah. I, I'm, I'm just thinking back to my bro and he said something that really resonated with me about educating yourself. That's right. Yeah. Um, you know, with whatever's going on in order, you can't understand something or you can't acknowledge something or really understand something unless you learn about it. Mm -hmm. And so learning about the process and the, the, you know, sexuality spectrum, the gender spectrum, all of that that stuff, I think is important for allies to learn so that you understand the coming out process. That's messy because someone may come out, you know, this happens all the time. They may come out and identify as gay because it's their sexual orientation, but then something happens where they identify um, differently on the gender spectrum. Um, so understanding all of that, I think, would be a big one for allies. Absolutely. Kara. And whether they're gay or straight or whoever, understanding it. You exactly. Know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's exactly it. It's, it's not it's just for everybody. We exactly. Don't and everything Mm -hmm. we're all learning together absolutely and being having the uh being open to learning and showing that you're being you're open to learning and educating yourself is awesome like okay i just had this awesome moment yesterday at work uh i just want to share it because this this guy that i work with is is um he's only two years younger than me and so you know we had a similar He's from Calgary, whatever, but uh, but we we had a similar grew up in a similar time frame, and so I know how the guys were in my class and how you know things the word gay and all these these you know these terms and mm-hmm. um, calling each other gay you know and being like making gay jokes as dudes in the class and you know there's always these things as, or there were anyways probably not nowadays but I'm not sure <laughs> but oh uh, yeah <laughs> maybe just a little bit nowadays I think yeah I mean okay so I am a welder <laughs> by trade and so uh so I work with guys that's that's all I work with and so there are moments like that uh, that happen and I am past that point of really you know making it a thing because it really isn't a thing for me how people as long as they're not hurting me necessarily I I don't um it was a very passive comment and but he came up to me long story short he came up to me afterwards um they were saying some things about uh making some gay dude jokes and and they came up to me after and was like so apologetic about not being more sensitive to like me and and just being like, we, we need to change as a, like, and I, I didn't even make any like comment or anything, but he was <laughs> like, I could tell is like, he was heartbroken that he might've hurt my feelings. And he, he was like, I, I grew up that way. And I'm just like, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't want to like, I, we want to, we want to be different. Our generation needs to be different. And I was just like, 
what's happening? Like, yeah. <laughs> like thank you. This is awesome. <laughs> Have a good weekend. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's just kind of cool how like, you know, uh, people want, I think people want to learn and be, be better and, and same thing with all of us. I think we're all, uh, we're, we're trying to be better. It's, it's one thing to know somebody's hurting somebody just to hurt somebody, but, uh, but for him to recognize and then want to, you know, uh, make a shift in how he uses his, his, um, his words and, and things he's saying just because you're, you're brought up that way, or you've, you've always only known that it's never too late to kind of sh make those shifts. So it, it's just kind of cool to hear the, the shift in people's thoughts, I guess, around mm -hmm. these. Things. Yeah. Wanting well, to and what I hear in that too, like, it's so cool when people are learning and changing and growing. And I also hear in that process, like, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, that, you know, you've been welding for how many years now? Oh, yeah, like off and on, I guess, Long like time. seven or eight, yeah. And you were listening to co-workers make homophobic jokes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm making a little puppet animal as I talk about homophobic jokes here. Um, and, and in your process of claiming your own power and claiming your own resilience over the years, you have learned how to yeah. not give a shit right. about what you're hearing. You uh -huh. learned to ignore it. You learned to not care. Right. Um, and was that a process for you of like yeah. actively not listening and not giving a shit? And because to um, me, I see that as yeah. resistance, the ignoring of that yeah. as, as resistance to. Yeah. Um, I, what I've learned is we're like I said, like these are very kind human beings. And I know that their words are, we're all at work. We're just trying to get through the day. They all, they only, they're only used to working with each other. And like, I just rolled in there like two, three weeks ago, right. I'm a new person. So um, I, and I generally like, I'm not part of that conversation. So I'm not going to interject myself into a conversation and tell them that they're how they're saying is incorrect because it's not really my place to to do so in my opinion so I feel like mm -hmm. I they weren't hurting me or saying anything mean about me yeah I mean it's maybe distasteful because maybe there's a gay boy in the room that they don't know about so that would be my only concern is that you never know who is listening and it might be the guy that yeah is a little bit shyer or the one that isn't, you, you just never know. And mm -hmm. so I think that's what I'm sensitive to is yeah. that person, not me. I'm not a gay dude. I don't care. I'm if they would have been making some weird comment about lesbians, that would have been probably a different story. And maybe <laughs> like, that would have made me probably uncomfortable. Actually, yeah. no, it had nothing to do with me, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so I just have learned, yes, to be, to know when, know when um, it's, my place to stand up for you know what's right but also that um if somebody uh, just also my personality if people aren't really uh being offensive to me i'm generally not offended yeah yeah i mean if they're offending somebody else i would probably stand up for that person as well so it's just like this passive comment about that's yeah mm -hmm. i think they all knew you know, to be honest, uh, I think everybody, everybody is sensitive to it and they, they just forgot that mm. I was gay. And so, um, but I don't care. So that, yeah, I don't know where the resilience really comes from. I guess I just, I, I know dudes, I like working with dudes or I wouldn't work with them. So I, I generally have learned to be more resilient with men Yeah, and with these comments. Yeah, and if you're hearing that from a coworker about yeah. like we need to be different, I think now is like okay, he said that to you. Yeah. He put energy into coming to you and approaching you and saying we need to be different. Now yeah. it's okay. You know, are you actually going to be? Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. where that whole like don't be a bystander comes in. You know, 
yeah you speak up speak out if you, if you feel that conviction inside of you and act on it yeah that's my only thing of him coming to you um and saying that and oh mentioned like that the only thing I would be worried about is the the person that you may be offending and it's not me but maybe there is a guy in the room who might, might be offended by it yeah or like has a gay son or exactly. uncle or whatever yeah, yeah. Or whatever yeah yeah exactly mm -hmm. yeah 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 <sighs> <laughs> it's so great doing this we I know do every week I know. Should we tell the listeners some of our uh, party stories growing up? Maybe not. Should we go to Mexico? <laughs> yes, we went to Mexico. Yes, we did. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a funny, funny story from Mexico was when uh, the, the lovely human came up to Kara and I and oh yeah we have to tell to ask, this story continue to ask kara and i if we were happy <laughs> and i was just like oh yeah i mean this mexico like we're look at the weather pong. we're on the beach yeah. we're Remember playing we're ping pong, pong on the beach laughing. Like, yes we're so happy. nothing can get better we're so happy and then she kept asking and asking and asking and then Ooh. finally kara you were the one well i'm like happy okay like she keeps asking if we're happy and we're telling her we're happy what does she need from me here <laughs> what she's and i think i looked at jenny and i was like i think what she's asking is if we're happy like we're gay together <laughs> together and then jenny's like oh i i don't even know how we answered <laughs> i think i was like i'm happy yeah you oh, yeah. said that you're like i'm happy she's not happy i'm not happy but i wish i was i, I don't know <laughs> yeah uh yeah well yeah. okay so i uh, coming back to resilience um thanks for not telling any more mexico stories oh uh yeah we <laughs> i mean i don't think i think they're all classified from other mm -hmm. than that one that mm -hmm. one that was it we played ping pong that's what we <laughs> yeah. did the whole time yeah whole time um, so I guess what I'm wondering now is, you know, looking forward into what more podcast episodes and what is your vision for your podcast and what, what are you hoping people get from it? Cause I've already told people what I get from it mm -hmm. other than listening to my two idiot friends be <laughs> the idiots. Oh, I mean, that's part of it for me is just feeling like I'm hanging out with you. Um, but like I said, for me, it's also about like witnessing people's process of owning themselves and their true selves, regardless of, of what will happen. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I see your out podcast as some, something that every single human being should listen to. I'm a little bit biased. Um, but what what's your vision for it just more episodes and yeah well yeah. the the ally perspectives are are kind of cool uh but yeah more more stories um yeah i think a more yeah gain, just well more, I, yeah i think um because we're taking a break for the summer just so we can hiatus you know, hiatus because the weather is super nice and we only get so much of it in the year and then um in maui year yeah <laughs> yeah i know the weather's so nice here um, <laughs> so yeah i i mean kara i'm sure you'll have your own opinion about this but it really is just continuing the conversation because in the last year and a half when we started the people I, we always joke around that Kara's our booking agent because she's like the chief marketing officer so she's the one who for the most part finds people to talk to so it's just going to be more of that and you know more stories hopefully grow our listener base even more um and Kara and I have always said it doesn't matter if one person is listening to us or 50,000 we just want to be able to help certain people and we heard a story because we were in this article in magazine based in Toronto mm -hmm. um, 
And this actually really resonated with me. There was a kid from Georgia who listened to one of our episodes, um, Tristan Kuhlman. He's a, a P flag president, president in New York, yeah. president, yeah, in um, Ontario. And this kid was so inspired by his story that he came out and started his own gay straight alliance. And when I read that, I was like, this is why we're doing this. Yeah. This is why we're doing this. And so just really continuing the conversation, obviously, Karen, and I want to do it in a way that we feel like we're still having fun with it because we do have lives outside of it. Um, sometimes kind of, <laughs> kind yeah. of so many things. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. So I, I don't know, Kara, I mean, we, we haven't done any goal setting for the fall when we're kind of back in, but that's kind of where I see it. Nice. Okay. okay. So we're having a meeting. Soon. <laughs> so we're going to have so a meeting. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Send me a reminder. Okay. But no, you told me who would be your, uh, your, your ultimate guest. <laughs> Ellen DeGeneres. Ellen, Ellen DeGeneres. DeGeneres. <laughs> yes. I think we're all relatively familiar about her coming out story. Oh, frick yeah. <laughs> Ellen coming out was like, huge for me and that'll be part of my I Kat and I haven't shared our coming out stories on our yeah on our show yet. so that's actually something oh that is a vision for sure that mm -hmm. so that's our our most uh, I would say within the next two months uh, we're gonna yeah probably in the fall when we come back hey <laughs> we're both <laughs> to be honest we are a little shy about it but <laughs> I know well it's it's actually really good because we're seeing the other side of this where it, this is really vulnerable telling yeah. your story and you know i don't want to offend anyone who might be listening like someone who wasn't okay with me being gay but at the same time it's like it's mm. it's my, my story it's kara's story and i think our listeners probably want to hear from us of yeah. our background so. i think jenny you and i were talking about that the other day is like yeah you like i want to tell my story but i'm nervous to tell my story because i might hurt those people so the parts that you know sometimes you don't you don't want to share these things, but, uh, but that's like why these need to come out because the allies listening or even the people listening who want to come out need to know that there's, you know, things can be rocky, very rocky and rocky for a while. And that might, you know, that, that relationship might, that might be the end of that relationship, but, mm -hmm. um, or it might not, it might come back and, you know, um, that, kind of it just takes time and and um yeah I think there's the resilience within that those relationships mm -hmm. yeah well it's interesting that you bring it up because you're talking about um you know coming sharing your coming out stories but that in the process of sharing the true story that's true to your experience that uh you're going to be talking about people's reactions in your lives that have been harmful to you. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, what you've both talked about is, well, I don't want to hurt their feelings. I don't want to make mm -hmm. them feel bad. Mm -hmm. And that's another part of this process is again, like, where do I fit in? Mm -hmm. Where do my yeah. feelings fit in? Yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to make you feel bad, but what about, what yeah. about me? Um, and so yeah. I think yeah. it's a really important thing that you're doing it and you're talking about not wanting to hurt people's feelings. Um, yeah. I think that can really prevent people. I'll speak for myself as a 30, almost 39 year old people pleaser extraordinaire. <laughs> like that can be a huge barrier is mm -hmm. not wanting to hurt people and not wanting to sort of be something that your parents or other people want you to be. And uh, so I'm, I'm very yeah. glad you're bringing that up. Yeah, I think, and I think it's in a lot of ways, it's how you say it. It's not like this person was an asshole when I was coming out. It's like this person's process was yeah, and being able to just communicate that and they were navigating through their own stuff. Um, but, but then at the end of the day, they came around and supportive and blah, blah, blah. So yeah, I think it's just Kara and I getting our ducks in a row with how we're going to say it. Cause I also want the message to be around them navigating it and their own process rather than the other side of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. 
And I think that's where our ally perspectives really came into play was because I, I'm curious how some of these people have worked through it as, as moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas and, you know, whatever, nieces, nephews, all these. So, and friends, like, how are these yeah. people navigating through this and, and finding, you know, um, like acceptance with that person? Mm -hmm. so. But yeah, Jenny, I think for you too, I mean, having your business, but also being really close friends of ours and your level of curiosity is so high when it comes to this sort of stuff. And it really, it means a lot. It really does. It means a lot that you are so willing to learn about what it's like to be an ally. So thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. You owe me huge. <laughs> um, okay. Well, on that note, um, is there anything else uh, you would like kind of the people that you've interviewed on your podcast to know about how you feel about their coming out stories? Um, yeah. I mean, there's been, there's been so many that I think mean, after every one, Hey Kat, we've, just felt like wow like that was just either just such a there's just so much vulnerability with these stories that it's the willingness for these people to share their stories first for the first time probably ever like literally probably the first time they've thought about thought of it since they came out this is yeah, not something yeah. you really talk about um so that is just really cool to um to hear the stories, but yeah, like I, it's hard to even pick. Uh, they've all been amazing, uh, but some of the, some of the ones I guess that for me that really stood out the resilience of um, Casey Cat that we talked about mm -hmm. uh, from a Mormon family going to Mormon College or University College, I think it was, and uh, and yeah, um, just feeling. Uh, quite a I think alone uh at that college but knowing and knowing there was and knowing that she didn't really fit in there and then and then coming out later and being so strong and going against family um for the sake of love so I think that that's just like it just showed for me that was one that really touched me uh, mm -hmm. I can't remember what number what episode it was Kat but Mm -hmm. um, but it was like maybe in the 40s. Yeah. yeah so. And I think for, for me, the hardest interview, but the one that stands out is Becky. Um, I forget the number, but uh, you have you to know. listen to them all to find. Yeah, them. exactly. Hey, so Becky, <laughs> <laughs> Becky Klein. Um, so she, she went through a lot, um, a lot of trauma uh, in her life that I just, I, I just can't imagine someone would experience in their lifetime that much trauma. And yet now where she's at is she's the happiest she's ever been. She's with a super loving partner and just like being at the depths of hell and going through that much shit and being so happy now and so free, really hard interview, really hard editing that one. Like I felt some anxiety yeah. listening to that afterwards. Right. Um, yeah. But at the end of it, now looking back, now that we're, I'm past all of that and thinking about her story, like that is just incredible to me right. that she yeah. was able to build that resilience and mm -hmm. be who she wants to be now. Yeah. So. yeah. so yeah, listen to them all. Well, uh, I have, and I will continue. <laughs> um, and I just want to say, yeah, thank you for being on Redefining Resilience. It's, uh, it's an intermittent interview series that is not as, uh, as well-rounded as your podcast yet, um, but it's very, very exciting to hear and see what y'all are doing over there. And uh, okay, so just for everyone potentially listening or watching, where can they find you? What's the scoop? Well, What's on all of the, uh, <laughs> all of our channels, 
all of the major podcasting channels. So we're we're on Spotify, um, we're on Apple Podcasts, uh, iHeartRadio, TuneIn. And it's um, Out Podcast. Yeah, so it's capital O-U-T. And we've got, yeah, a picture of someone, she, uh, well, I guess someone, we haven't really identified. Well, there, it is. there we go, yeah, exactly. Oh, you can't really see mine because I'm in fake Hawaii. Yeah, oh, in Hawaii. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but uh, that's the the logo. So you can check it's us out cool. there. And then, Kara, if you want to talk about our Insta. Oh, yes. Uh, out underscore podcast. But yes, it is, Jenny, you're right. It's out podcast when you're searching it. Mm-hmm in iTunes. Uh, yeah. You search. And you also have a Patreon to help you mm, yes. pay the bills because you're doing yeah. this on the side of your desks. Yeah. So where do they find that? Like, how do they get signed up for that? Yeah. So it's, um, Patreon. Uh, so P A T E R E. <laughs> Hold on. Let me get my spelling. Kit. You gotta write it down. P A T R E O N. Patreon.com <laughs> uh, <laughs> forward slash out podcast. So okay. yeah, it's, it would be great. It's, uh, it's just helping to support the show. Yeah. So thank awesome. you, Jenny, for being a Patreon member. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, thank, and thank you for, yeah. Thank you honestly for, for your, your support and for, um, for asking us to be on this. This is a great opportunity to mm-hmm. share what we're doing and, and uh and to help hopefully help some of the people that you see as well and uh yeah yeah. absolutely this is a huge huge area of you know kind of what we do at peak resilience and that's why i honestly think anyone regardless of their gender or sexuality um can really benefit from from this podcast because it's just about um being true to yourself and actually figuring out what that is first and then getting the courage to, to present that to the world um, or to people who are safe enough. Um, it's, I think it's useful for everyone regardless of their position. So, yeah, for sure. So thank you. And I think this Thanks. is the, the longest, like actual coherent, serious conversation that we've ever had together. Yeah. So. yeah. This is never going to happen again. <laughs> never again. <laughs> no. Never again. Um, okay. So if you've made it this far into the watching extravaganza, thank you. Thank and you. Thanks, everyone. Signing off now. Thanks, Kara. And thanks, Kat. Goodbye thank you. from the toy convention. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Goodbye from Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs>